Okay, so first things first, just take your smartphone and take a few pictures of your bedroom, get all sorts of different angles, and make sure it encapsulates most of your bedroom. Next, go to the website fspy.io and download it. Next, just start matching up the X and Y reference lines with various reference points on your image. If the Z value is pointing down, just change the vanishing point from X to negative X. Save the fspy file and then go to Blender, Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and then under Install, install the fspy zip file. Now you should be able to install the Import fspy Project add-on. Now just go to File, Import, fspy, and then double click on your fspy file that you saved. Now that you have your reference image, you can just add a plane to the scene and start matching up all of the reference points. I extrude out the edges, extrude to the top of the roof, and even go into wireframe to match things up a little bit better. Although your room will have different objects than me, the application should be the same. Just add in various primitive objects and start boxing out objects in your scene. For your room, you're just going to do the same thing, add in the appropriate primitive object and then just scale it and extrude it until it fits the image. You probably have a desk, so just use a basic cube, scale it down, and then match it up. If you have a computer in your room, you can usually get away with using a simple cube and adjusting the scale. If you have a window, you can just match up some loop cuts with Ctrl R and then extrude out the newly created face. Sometimes I like to turn on cavity under the studio settings to give a nice outline to the edges. I'll just keep boxing out some of the basic objects that are in my reference photo. looks pretty good so far. Bookshelves are really easy, just scale down a cube, adjust the size, and then fill in some faces. Luckily, most beds are built the same, so you can usually start with a basic cube and scale and extrude accordingly. I use some bevels to adjust the curvature as well. You can just use a cube for the mattress, we'll subdivide and sculpt it later. Don't be scared to bring in some pre-made assets, it'll help expedite your workflow and oftentimes makes you a lot more efficient. For the tapestry on my wall, I just used a basic plane, extruded it out, and then subdivided it a few times. I used proportional editing to give it a little bit of variation and distortion. You can also use the Displace modifier with a Voronoid texture to give it a little bit more natural displacement. Next, all I really did was added in some minor details such as the art on my wall and a mouse and keyboard on my desk. For some of the more complicated models, in order to save time, I just downloaded them from CG Trader or TurboSquid. It's also a good idea to get a quick preview render in Cycles. For the mattress, all I really did was subdivide it a few times and added in a multi-resolution modifier. Sheets are super easy, you just subdivide a plane a few times and then use a very basic cloth simulation. These don't require too much effort. After that's done, you can just use some very basic sculpting tools to get in more detail. In my opinion, blankets and pillows take way too long to simulate and oftentimes are really hard to get realistic detail, so I prefer to just download or buy mine off of CG Trader or Turbo Squid. The fabric textures were just basic textures downloaded from Polygon.com and applied to the blankets. The link to the website is in the description. For my bookshelf and bed, I just put a very basic wood material. 
Once again, I got these from Polygon.com. Same for the top of my desk, I just got an identical wood texture and applied it with a bevel. If you're wondering about that little convenient menu, I'm just using the Hard Ops add-on. Now nothing is going to make your room look more like your room than an accurate carpet texture. i found that a lot of online carpet textures don't get that nice detail, the dark and light areas that you get in your own carpet. With that being said, i found the best way to get the most amount of realism in your final render is to take a picture of your own carpet, a nice unbiased bright area with your camera, and then use this as your carpet texture in Blender. Just find a nice and bright area of your room and take a picture of the carpet. So we're just going to import that texture into Blender, assign it to the floor, but one thing you're going to notice is that we get this very ugly tiled effect. Simply put, just taking a picture of your floor doesn't make it seamless. So if you're experienced in Photoshop or the like, you could probably fix it quite easily, but I found a much simpler solution with this website here, which I'll link in the description. Basically, you just upload your image, set the intensity to around 10, and a radius of around 5, and it'll make it seamless. Now, if you apply that texture instead, you'll see that the seams go away. However, you'll notice that the tile repetition is still very visible. To fix this, I use the Polygon Uber Mapping node. I'll link the tutorial to it in the description. Basically, all you do is import the node group, adjust the mosaic rotation and normals, and you get some nice variation in your carpet. I can promise you that using a picture of your own carpet is going to give you the best replication of your room. Now that we have the carpet and a lot of detail added into the scene, we can just add a point lamp, adjust the brightness, and then go into cycles to preview the render. You can also adjust the color to adapt it to your room and move around the light until you get a nice location for the brightness. You can press 0 on the number pad to go back into your default camera view. Now it's just a matter of texturing whatever details are missing in your scene. In my case it was the refrigerator, the computer, the tapestry, and things like that. If any objects in your bedroom emit light, you can just use a basic emission shader for that. You can also make the emission shader emit all sorts of different colors. So the tapestry texture was super easy, I just went to the Amazon link that I bought the tapestry from and screenshotted it. Sometimes the most complex textures are the easiest. After that, I just added an image texture node, rotated the image, and scaled it accordingly. You can also add a noise texture with a bump node to give it a little bit of depth. Now I'll just do a short time lapse of the modeling of the computer. It's usually just basic loop cuts and extrusions to get the right detail. I could have probably put more detail into the computer, but as long as I have the general formation down, it's fine. Texturing was really easy, I just used some basic materials and put them in the right locations. For your walls, all you really need is a basic stucco texture. I got mine off of polygon.com as well and scaled up the size a little bit. For some of the more unique textured objects in your room, you can usually just take a photo of it and map it in Blender. You just take a photo, unwrap your object, and then assign an image texture to that photo. For computer monitors, usually you just inset the front face, extrude it back a little bit, and then give it a little bit of bevel. You don't need a big bevel at all, just a small one to capture the light. For the border of computer monitors, you can just assign a basic black material and call it a day. For the wallpaper of your monitor, all you really do is unwrap the front face, assign an image texture with your wallpaper, and then scale it accordingly. I also like to tone down the roughness in the material settings because computer monitors are generally pretty reflective. Now's a good time to give another preview render and see how it looks. Don't be afraid to adjust the brightness and the location of your light. Sometimes small details make or break the scene. Things like window sills and baseboards are super useful to add in.
Okay, so for baseboards, I'm not going to explain it in this video, but I'll link a tutorial that I made on how to create baseboards in the description. Basically, you just box out a blueprint with some vertices and then extrude it across. Then just snap the vertices to the corner of your room and start extruding around. A ceiling fan is also a good addition to your scene, assuming you have a ceiling fan in your room. It just adds that little bit of extra detail that makes it look even more realistic. I added in one of those bulb covers, not sure what they're called, but I have one on my fan and I figured it would be a nice detail to add in. You can also mix it with a translucent shader so the light passes through it nicer. The fan cables are just basic bezier curves with a little bit of bevel applied to it. Now add an area lamp to your scene and put it right at the front where the open face is. We're going to make this a portal so that way it reduces the noise in the scene. Just go to the lamp settings and tick on the portal option. This will control the light bounces and make your final render less noisy. Now we can just keep adding in the smaller details such as wall outlets. I got this model at polygon.com. Things like wall outlets are those pieces that you don't take notice to but that your brain subconsciously renders in the scene. Since my bookshelf is looking pretty empty, I'll just add in some filler objects to make it look a little bit more natural. Things like books and notepads are always good to add. Make sure you keep adding detail to your own scene because you probably have a lot of different details that my room doesn't have. Don't forget to add things like your smartphone or some decorations. So this is probably a little bit of extra, but I have some LED lights behind my bed as you can see in the reference photo. To add those in, I just used some basic area lamps, scaled them, applied a blue color, and then increased the power. After a few adjustments, here's my result. Next, I chose to paint some wires behind my computer like you can see in the reference photo. I don't have the best cable management, so I basically just added in a Bezier curve, went to the draw settings, and then just started painting a bunch of wires behind my computer. You can add wires really anywhere. You just add in a curve, go into edit mode, go to the draw tool, and then start painting across the surface. I also added in my microphone, which we model in my hard surface modeling YouTube playlist. If you're interested in that, I'll put a card on the screen. So once you think your room is complete, go ahead and give it a quick preview render and see how it looks. I'm going to move my 3D view to a different position, add in a new camera, and make that one the main camera by pressing Ctrl and 0 on the number pad. Okay, now we just need to go to the render output settings and change the resolution to 1920 by 1080 and make sure the percentage is at 100. You can also select the camera and adjust the focal length if necessary. Now we're just going to go to the render settings, make sure we're in cycles, and change the render sampling to 1500 to 2000 samples. Under performance, I'm going to set my tile size to around 16 by 16 since I'm rendering with a CPU. If you're rendering with a GPU, a tile size of around 1024 by 1024 should be enough. Finally, go to the layers panel and then tick on denoising at the bottom. Once you're ready to render, just hit the F12 button on your keyboard, and depending on the complexity of your scene, your hardware, and the lighting, it might take a couple of hours to render. And for that reason, I'm going to go take a nap. So I used to do my post-processing directly in Blender in the built-in compositor, but I found that it got too convoluted too quickly, so instead I used Luminar 4 to get all these details. It just saves me a lot of time and looked a lot better in the end. So here's the before and after result. I thought it looked a lot cleaner after doing some post-processing. So here's my final render. I think it turned out pretty good and here's a comparison with my bedroom. Sorry about the bad quality. 
Now, as a 3D artist, I think it's important to critique your own work, so I'm going to discuss some things I like about my scene and some things that I don't like about it. So let's start off with some optimism. What I do like about the scene is the natural lighting, how the carpet looks, how all of the models come together to look just like my bedroom, and I also especially like the post-processing effects that I made. So as for the things I could improve on, I definitely think the wall could have done with a little bit less bumpiness. I didn't really want to re-render the scene just to make a little less bump, so I just left it how it was. I also think I could have added in more wires and just things to make the room look a little bit more messy because I'm not the most organized person in the world. Lastly, some surface imperfections would have been really good because I have areas on my desk and bed that have little bits chipped out of it, and I think that would add a little bit of a nicer effect overall to the scene. Now, before this video ends, there's one topic I really want to talk about that's very, very important to me. The whole reason I made this tutorial video, this overview, was because I find these types of projects to be fun. Simple as that. A lot of beginner users or anyone transitioning over to Blender quit really quickly because they're not having fun. A lot of people will be really good artists and are already good artists, they just get demotivated because they're not focusing on what they enjoy. That's one mistake I made when I started around 7 years ago. I quit for a while because I was following tutorials that were boring and I didn't like. I want you to stop that and I want you to start focusing on tutorials that help you learn but also bring you enjoyment. You're going to get a lot better at 3D doing that and you're also going to enjoy it a lot more. So every day if you can, do a new project, do a new tutorial, do something you find fun in Blender and I promise you you're going to get a lot better at the software than if you just want the traditional route of just following tutorials you don't have fun with. So please take that advice. I really want everyone to get involved in this community. It's so much fun once you get better at Blender, and I hope this video was a step towards getting you good at Blender, but also bringing you a bit of enjoyment with it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.